Welcome to the 101st episode of the Concussion Talk Podcast. I'm Nick Mercer. And uh, before I start today, I'll do the thing with sponsor Head Check Health. Concussion Talk Podcast is presented by Head Check Health. Head Check Health bridges the gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. To our organizations like the Canadian Football League, Track Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada, who rely on HeadCheck Health to improve communication and optimize care. Visit HeadCheckHealth.com for more. And so thank you to HeadCheck Health. And please sponsor, not sponsor, but you could sponsor, like, that'd be great. But uh, subscribe, rate, review my podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Amazon, wherever you your podcast. A stitch or SoundCloud, um, and verbal goes on. Um, anyway, and uh, and please uh, consider supporting my podcast and my website at on Patreon. So go to Patreon, patreon.com slash nutrition talk. And uh, and with all that said and done, I'd like to for, introduce my guest, which I'll actually get her to introduce herself, Julie Stan, or should I say Dr. Julie Stan, and uh. She has literally written the book about concussion in youth sports, and uh, so we'll talk about that. And uh, the title of the book is "You the Your Brain the Brain on Youth Sports," and uh, frankly, the cover says it all. The brain is like says it's called uh, your the brain on youth sports, the science to miss and the future, which is frankly what is what it's all about. So that encapsulates this pod, this podcast and this interview. And one more thing to, to say before I forget, as Julie to introduce herself and just talk about her grand, short grandchildren. But first of all, one note from her website, which is juliestam.com slash book. Uh, it says, for a little summary of the book, says, no athlete has to sustain hundreds of impacts and repetitive brain trauma in order to gain the benefits of sports. And I think that's Basically, that's the whole whole lesson to this podcast. So, first of all, Julie, welcome, and uh, our doctor, Dr. Julie Stan, welcome, and uh, please introduce yourself and your your tons of credentials. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm excited to talk with you. Um, yeah. So, I got started in this world as uh, an athletic trainer. So, I have a um, I'm a licensed athletic trainer in sports medicine and. Uh, I had a a patient that just didn't get better after a concussion. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he, he was young, you know, freshman in high school. And, um, it was just so moving to see how that affected his life, uh, beyond just sports, you know, friendships, um, school, all of that. And that's really what got me interested in this. And then, uh, I was a grad assistant athletic trainer at Boston university for a year and then uh, joined the uh, CTE center, the chronic traumatic encephalopathy uh, center out at Boston University, um, where we studied long-term consequences of repetitive impacts. And uh, so I've done research on CTE, on uh, concussions themselves, concussion education and management. Uh, I've done research on uh, my, my main area of focus being the long-term consequences of hitting your head head a lot as a kid. So we, you know, studied, you know, what happened in those who are older uh, based on when they started hitting their head repeatedly and potentially, you know, disrupting that development, which I'm sure we'll talk more about on the podcast. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. And you're now, you're now at university of Wisconsin in Madison, right? Yeah. uh, Yeah. So yeah, I'm at the university of Wisconsin, Madison, and uh, I also teach anatomy. So I love anatomy, neuroanatomy, learning about uh, the body and the brain. And, um, and then I also, yeah, do research here as well. What was your PhD, your PhD thesis? Uh, My PhD, uh, it was in anatomy and neurobiology. And it was about, uh, my thesis was on the the age of first exposure to repetitive brain trauma uh, Uh in youth football. Uh So yeah, so you kind of go both on both ends, the youth and CT, which is more associated with older play, older not necessarily players, older athletes, older individuals. But mm-hmm. uh, we're seeing some 
or some or some some uh, indications that in uh, in high even high school kids or university kids, not sure. I know there was a bit of there was talk of that a few years ago in uh in New York New York State, I believe. And there's an athlete, there's a college athlete who died and he was in, in his freshman year, I believe. Yeah. And there was CT. yeah, there was somebody recently, I think, who yeah. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there have been several cases. Um, there was, I know there was a recent player, I believe in New York who just, um, passed away after a, a hit on the field in high school. Oh, um, there've yeah. been several cases, um, unfortunately of, of suicides, both post-concussion yeah. and, um, potentially, potentially due to CT, although it is, it is really difficult to tell, especially when they're younger, if yeah. it's actually the CT, if there's enough damage or yet. Because I know that yeah. you know, in Ontario, province in Canada I'm in a different province but uh, the Romans law that passed which is mm -hmm. big and that was that's to prevent you know athletes from going back can cost the Bradford they appreciate because they go back on the field so that's an important role and that I know that was she died on the field that was the mm -hmm. 20 year I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say the date because I'm just you know, I can't say for sure but I'm gonna say 2012 but uh, again I assume because I don't really know 2014. Anyway, um, but uh, yes, yeah, so well, what you first mostly you know, I saw you saw you follow Instagram, which is great. So thank you. And I saw that yes. I was reading your uh, little excerpt about your, your book, your the the brain and youth sports. And uh, the first one to just ask you, Denley, what are the primary? I'm sure it sounds like you got kind of in the want to write this book because of the myths surrounding the the trauma in sports and. And the, in the value of sports and how that's overlooked a lot of times, and when it's just just one side, just oh, it's brain time is bad and it is bad. But I mean, sports are and brain time is bad. You get that brain time and sports, therefore sports are bad. And so yeah. you kind of uh, kind of it uh, was a not what do I start enough word? You can dispel thank you there you go. dispelled dispelled those myths. So what are some of these important myths? about you sports that you find are so important to again dispel because I'm not I really have not yeah. yeah you know I um it really was one of the big reasons I wrote the book you know there were um, a lot of articles being written about potentially um delaying the start of tackling and football and uh, a lot of just bad arguments and and myths that were being thrown around for why we shouldn't make any changes and so, you know, one of the major myths when it comes to repetitive impacts in sports is that, well, kids are just small, you know, they're, they're small, they, they yeah. don't run that fast. So they, they don't hit that hard or that much. I mean, I was at a, a sixth grade football game and a, a dad told me that, um, yeah. oh, don't worry about it. Cause they're, they're small. They don't hit that hard or that much. Yeah. And it's just not true. And maybe they aren't actually hitting quite as hard, but it's all relative. Yeah. Yeah, it's all relative. And a child's head is larger compared to their body yeah. than an adult. And that plus you put a football helmet on, especially, um, or even, you know, hockey helmets too have weight to them. Yeah. And that creates kind of this bobblehead effect. And as a result, the brain feels the force essentially very similar to the high school and college counterparts. You know, the, the brain is moving in the skull and that the speed and the acceleration is very, very similar, uh, to high school and, and college counterparts. And when you really look at the impacts per session, so per game or per practice, the number of impacts that they sustain are actually very similar too. Um, there are fewer generally over the season because, you know, a, a youth season tends to be shorter than, uh, you know, high school or college season, yeah. but the number of impacts per session are about the same and they can still incur hundreds of impacts in just a short season. Right. So those, uh, those are some of the, uh, some of this, but uh, how would you, if someone can do like, for example, that father, which you said the grade six football game can do and said, you know, then don't hit the hair because their kids don't worry about it. Um, what would you, how, I know it's used to, because your book, the main, the one thing you do in the book is get it down, just go to explosive people who can, without having a necessary scientific knowledge of this, just understand that, this uh, it is all relative, and this was so. How would you? What would you say to that person? Well, not what yeah, I would, would you say? Yeah, I would. I would say you know, it doesn't look like it. I think it's a, a an argument that comes from 
you know, just the experience watching the game. And it doesn't look like those hits are that bad, but really the science just doesn't agree with that as far as the, what the brain feels essentially uh, that with the forces that are experienced by the brain. And, you know, those, those impacts matter. There's research that shows that there are changes in the brain of youth athletes and high school athletes over the course of a season, even in those who don't have a concussion. So just because they don't end up with symptoms doesn't mean that those repetitive impacts aren't affecting the brain and their children. So there's so much happening in the brain of an athlete, you know, uh, of a child that's, that's developing, you know, the laying down of myelin to help make signals travel faster, making so many different connections in the brain and then fine tuning those connections. And when we're hitting our head repeatedly, we could be disrupting that process. So, you know, even if they don't have symptoms right away, there are potential consequences of that. And there's no harm in, in, um, you know, just not, not hitting at that age, you know, like they can play sports and they should play sports, but if we can play versions that, um, you know, aren't, don't have inherent impacts, we're not going to prevent everything. You know, that's just the risk of sports, but you know, those impacts that are just naturally part of the game don't need to happen when they're young. Right. And that, that requires a whole lot of the different training and coaching for these mm -hmm. athletes. And I was actually a, a, friend, a good friend of mine, one of my, one of my better friends, there's a, I saw just saw in August, uh, he's done that trail and uh, his, uh, his daughter or for one daughter, but I don't know if the second will go into his plays a ring it, which is like hockey, but it's just not, it's not hockey because, you know, it's a different sport than hockey, but it's very similar to hockey. It's, it's like a stick without a blade and then you have a ring and you just got to use the ring. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, that was in Bamper. Uh, he asked, yes, his wife said, well, is that, is that a, is that, is that, no, is that contact? There's no, there's no contact when they get to certain age because he's not old enough now, no matter what, to play contact sports. But, um, and so, and so, the times, no, it's not contact, but, you know, like, much like soccer, it's not, it's not, it is contact, but it's not supposed to be like, because technically, because there's contact, because you did do touch, but like you're not supposed to collide, like doing mm -hmm. hockey by in football, but uh, you do instantly, and that's probably what causes some of the one of the bigger problems is why there's so many. But I mean, so I know like in mm -hmm. that's kind of wrapping up. Um, I know like in in the states in the Canada, it's football and hockey kind of flip flop. Right? They're both sides, like states are football and Canada's more hockey, but it's both in both countries. Um, so, but what are the other, other sports you think are really like, honestly, rugby in like Australia? Yeah. I know it's not that a lot of followers in Melbourne for some reason, which is great. Yeah. But I don't know why, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, what would you say? What are the other, are the other sports that you think there need to be? You know, I know every sport you see would keep wearing, mm -hmm. but are there some sports that you think should really keep their head up? You know, you know, obviously it's not part of fun, but, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm glad they're going. My phone is ringing. It's good. There we go. Okay, okay. I hope that yeah. didn't disturb me, but uh, my phone's yeah. going there. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it, it's an important question, and I think you know, looking at the repetitive impacts is important because concussion risk is higher in certain sports, but they may not have as many repetitive impacts. Um, Football and hockey, as you said, definitely rugby is, is definitely growing and growing, you know, it, it's growing all over North America. It's growing yeah. everywhere. So yeah. that's going to be a big one. And soccer isn't collision, but the head is a big part of the yeah. game. And it's not just the headers, but going for a header and hitting and, each other yeah, or going for a header and falling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's big. Um, also lacrosse is, is right. one it's in the men's side anyway, because checking is part of the uh, boys and men's lacrosse. Um, so those are, are sports of interest, but I think the other ones that haven't been studied enough would be, you know, Australian rules football is getting some attention now, but wrestling, even how cheerleading. You, how you would even just like eliminate contact in us as you were, as you rules football. Before yeah. That, that's, that's all, it's all about contact. Yeah. I did have someone tell me once though, that was from Australia that it's, it's changed a lot over the years and there's more. Um, a little bit less physicality and a little more art to it, you know, okay. but I honestly don't know enough about it to say, you know, say I, more, I but I shouldn't really have said it yeah. Uh, but, but even cheerleading is one that uh, is often overlooked, Yeah, but 
you're in competitive cheerleading and you're doing stunts and throws and all that, like, um, you know, I've had cheerleaders hit their head on somebody else's knee or they come down on a shoulder or they, they aren't caught correctly in, in the basket when, and, uh, you know, that's another way, or, you know, you're one of the people catching the, the flyer and you take a, a foot to the head or something, you know, um, it's one that I think it's overlooked and, and deserves some more study too. Yeah. I saw it. I have that USA cheer, the Lori and Jim, I believe it's Jim, Jim on the podcast in episode 90, 90, four, five, four, mm -hmm. 94. So then they talk about also had a, an athlete here is now also an athletic trainer. She was a she was a gymnast and she coaches our university, local university cheerleading squad here. And uh, and they, again, concussion is a major, very important. They they uh, missed that. No, you said USA chair, for example, is just two chains, mm -hmm. which if you don't know, you know them very well, but uh, to 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 do it, give it not not give, but to show their concussion programs. For their for their athletes and coaches, so that's yeah. important. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so you're and you you also did uh, you I know you studied that uh, you studied it, or you did uh, the brain bank in in Boston, mm -hmm. and so was that was that was that all was like CD you looked at there, or did you like it just it's only in was only in the experienced athletes, or was it also in the in youth? Did you do it both, or did you just do one side? Yeah. Of so, so I was more on the clinical research side. So while we went out to the brain bank, I didn't study the brains themselves. Um, post-mortem, I studied people who were living and I studied it more with, with brain imaging. Right. Um, and so we, I studied former athletes primarily. Um, oh. so mostly, um, former NFL players, but in one of our other studies, we had former college, former high school players too. Uh, and, but I looked at the, the outcomes based on when they started playing in youth. So we asked our oh. former NFL players, um, they were all 40 to 60 years old. Um, we asked them when they started playing. And then, uh, for some of the studies, we divided them using age 12, because that was a, a good measure for, um, what we were looking at. Right. Um, it's not right for everything in this type of research because some, some structures don't follow that trajectory. Um, when we looked at one structure, we used we didn't use a cutoff because it, it developed even to 14, 15 years old. So um, it really does depend on what, what structures and, and functions you're looking at and how they develop. But um, we found that those who started playing before age 12 were uh, significantly worse off than those who started playing at 12 or later on things like uh, self-reported depression, both self-reported and um, objective measures of executive functioning. So things like planning, decision-making, behavioral control, um, multitasking, those kind of things. Um, and also, you know, they had more uh, apathy um, and we saw differences in the brain too. So differences in a structure uh, that connects the right and left sides of the brain, the corpus callosum, yeah. and saw that um, one of the measures suggests that maybe they didn't lay down that myelin or that kind of coding, that insulation on uh, their um, axons and neurons in the brain as much as those who uh, started playing later because you know they were hitting during the time when that was supposed yeah. to happen. Right. So um, several, several studies there that we did that even though we were working with older individuals, we were kind of looking at the consequences of what they did with you in, as youth, but later in life. And you mentioned the myelin, the myelin sheath, that I know that. So you mentioned that a bunch of times. And also, so with that, I know that's a protective layer right, around the mm -hmm. axons. But, and then tau, the tau protein goes, is more into the brain, right? But that, with the myelin sheath protection, is that at all? Or is that, am I? So, just, yeah, it's the same part. So that it's in the same part. It's a, a, the tau is a stabilizing protein and it's in the axon. It's just not, it, the myelin surrounding the axon and the yeah. tau is within the axon okay. that's helping to kind of keep that uh, it's well, stabilizing the the axon so uh, they're both kind of on that same area and both are affected potentially with that stretching um, and uh, kind of strain that happens with repetitive impacts and concussions right um, oh. we didn't find that 
you know, the evidence right now really suggests that the more years you play, the greater the risk of CTE. And that kind of goes with like, if you play younger, you probably play more years, um, you know, because most people will so, play yeah, so a year, a year is like measured by hours played or whatever, like yeah. really impact yeah. kind of thing, or is that measured? Some not necessarily measured by years. Yeah, by and it, that's a great question. It's not perfect. It's just yeah. used kind of as a proxy for total impacts. Um, with I thought that if you just we just ask more how many years did you play or what year did what how old were you when you started and kind of look at age that way. Um, and it's with a thought that the more years you played, the more impacts, but it's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. Um, but those who had more years, which would probably mean more impacts were at greater risk. Yeah. Um, and you probably played more and sustained more impacts if you start younger. But otherwise, other than that, just playing young in itself doesn't seem to increase the risk of CTE, but we did find, and is the CTE center did find that um, in people who got CTE anyway, who went on to get, get that disease, their symptoms started about 13 years earlier if they started playing before age 12. And the younger they were when they started, uh, if you know, for every year younger they played, or they were when they started playing, their symptom onset was about two and a half years earlier. And so it seems that we may be diminishing uh, our reserve. I compare it to driving a car. And um, you know, if you have two cars that are the same make and model and same um, going the same speed down the same road, um, and one has a full tank of gas and one has three quarters of the tank, they can both go for a really long time, but one's gonna run out of gas first. And if we're not filling our neuronal tank, like our brain's yeah. tank, then, you know, we we're going to run out of gas first. And that may be what's happening. If we're hitting our head a lot as a kid, we're not necessarily filling that tank. And if something like CTE or another degenerative disease, or even aging starts to interact with that, we may run out of that reserve faster. So does, does aging in the home being in the weeds of this, but does aging really affect, really affect the, uh, the, uh, the growth of the, the tau protein or the Generation of the myelin at all does that does that just was age have a disproportionate disproportionate impact on that or is it or is it mostly just the impacts and the stuff because of it? Yeah, so that's a great question. And the the tau itself, we shouldn't really be seeing much of that tau in the brain okay. when we're older. Typically, it shouldn't be there. Um, and you know, we do have some degeneration that happens with aging, but we also you know if we um, exercise our brain and exercise our body throughout life, we can help to increase that reserve too. So, um, you know, some people can see, be completely sharp for a very long time. Um, and that, that helps to exercise the brain. You know, there was another study that showed that, um, symptoms started later in people who had jobs that really required a lot more critical thinking. Right. So, um, that's, you know, that's a positive side. Um, but yeah, I, aging definitely though can lead to some degenerate, or, you know, some some age related degeneration yeah. in the brain. Um, not necessarily yeah. with the tau though. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't. We shouldn't see a lot of that tau, even if in somebody who's quite a bit older. Okay, and I uh, just mentioned you were mentioning the, the tank, which I've still seen a lot of people people that follow on on say you know in social media um with uh the not necessarily tank but basically a glass full of water and say you know use this much you pour out like some water because you know it's so much energy today so it's like the same thing like per day it's just the length just goes on for your life really so and that's mm -hmm. when you show me ignorance self for it but when you went in big football and then even hockey and i haven't I never played hockey so i don't know but uh, when do you when would you start hitting and or contact in, in football. And if you know about the States hockey in the U S when does that hitting start, you know? Yeah. So hockey, um, the U S and Canada, to my understanding, both, um, have rules now that the earliest that checking would be intro introduced would yeah. be age 13. And I know some, some leagues are even older and okay. there's a push for some to be yeah. older and that's been really effective in reducing concussion rates and yeah. impacts and which is great. And it, hockey, at least in the United States, has uh, never been healthier as a sport. Like there, yeah. there are more kids playing than there have ever been, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, 
football, on the other hand, you can, in some leagues, you can start tackling at age five. Ooh. So it's so young. Yeah, the, Most the, leagues are, aren't quite tackling that young, but there is opp- opportunity to tackle that young. Uh, but by seven, eight years old, most kids that are in it are, are uh, tackling. But um, those numbers are down. You know, yeah. We are seeing fewer and fewer people playing, uh, young children playing tackle football and more and more children playing flag, which is awesome. Yes, yes. Uh, but there's no rule on that. At I know there's a, lot of, there's a big push, like you know, size one year tweets, but by far I've seen that. And I've seen, I think yeah. Drew Brees also to the, the importance of this, yeah. even like seven or five or five, this is, I think, ridiculous, but it's seven or eight. This, I mean, the, the kids, like, you know, no matter how well they go, they are seven, eight year old kids, and they don't necessarily know when to hit or don't appreciate their, you know, they, they're kids, right? So they just want to play sports and like have fun with the friends and hit the friend, ha ha. And then all of a yeah. sudden, like, this is a, that's when, this is when, it's, when people are expecting you to hit, then it's quite different. They can brace for it and they can take appropriate actions. But when you're not expecting it, it's a different uh, term at all the other. So what, yeah. what would you, so, so you, 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 you would all, I mean, you, you would be a bunch of, no, no checking hockey, you know, and no contact football. Like, how would you, what do you, because, you know, you played, you did play a lot of sport when you were a kid. I mean, or maybe yeah. you just probably still do, but I mean, and mm-hmm. so I shall kind of back out on that question of talk more your the benefits of sports, the importance of sports. So what, why, why should kids play sports? Is, I guess is. Yeah. Yeah. Kids. So I, I think every kid should have the opportunity to play sports. And I believe that we can be pro sports and pro brain at the same time. Yeah. And, um, sports have so many benefits. There's physical benefits, you know, physical health, physical activity, kids who are active as, as kids and adolescents are far more active or far more likely to be active as adults. And, you know, we have an obesity em- epidemic and around sports. the world. So team sports are, yeah. Yeah. And team sports are, are particularly great, um, with mental health benefits yeah. and social benefits. Um, you know, having that team to rely on, uh, it can be really important for kids and provide yeah. so many emotional, social, mental health benefits, and also the life skills that we learn in sports, you know, teamwork, um, having, you know, to go through something hard and, and, um, you know, get back up from that learning how to win, you know, with grace and, and lose with humility. And, yeah. um, you know, all of that is so, so important just for life skills, uh, yeah. determination, perseverance, grit, you know, these are all great things that we can yeah. learn in sports and that, you know, we don't want to be getting rid of any sports. I'm definitely not for that uh, because they're, you know, different people have different loves of, of different sports and we yeah. want to keep every opportunity we can, but we can do that without hitting our heads repeatedly, especially yes, exactly. as kids. Exactly. Yeah. So I see my last one, my last question, I have a two part first of all, which is kind of big to better, which is what sports did you play as you said, and I read your, you said you have three, three sport athletes. So what were mm-hmm. your sports? And also uh, how would you see, what would you see change in sports to allow, especially contact sports to allow them to, uh, to continue, continue to be enjoyed by youth? And uh, yeah. 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 So um, I played volleyball, basketball, and softball. And, um, and I played a little bit of soccer when I was much younger too, uh, but primarily volleyball, basketball, softball, and, um, I still play volleyball and basketball, uh, now. Um, and you know, I always get kind of insulted, honestly, when people say like, oh, but kids have to hit to be tough. Well, I didn't hit my head repeatedly in any of my sports and I consider myself pretty tough. You know, I, I, I just think that's, it's just not true that you have to hit to learn that. Um, and I think for the future, I would like to see in a perfect world, um, you know, no tackling before high school, or at least that age 13 cutoff that's also used in hockey. Um, I just don't think we need to, you know, we can teach so much about the game, um, in football. We can teach so much about, um, you know, athleticism and, you know, what, what the rules are of the game. We can create great athletes overall. Uh, bef- and get stronger athletes too, before they start hitting each other, you know, so they're ready. They're more physically ready to take uh, that impact when 
they start, you know, right now, a big problem in football tends to be that some kids go through puberty early, some go through late. Yeah. And you can have some massive size discrepancies yeah. there. <laughs> um, and um, that can cause problems. Yeah, so. Cassandra, have you seen that, that video uh, about this uh, Andy, the Kirtology Eagles coach, the Wallyo, uh, his name now, Jimmy, uh, pump ass kick competition with that. And it was, it was like Pierce, he was coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Andy, okay. big guy, Andy. Reed? Yeah, Andy Reed. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Was a kid, was his, he was a kid playing pound bass and kick. And he was like man size. And they were all in the yeah. kids, all like, you know, eight years old. Like he was, in the, he was the same age. And yeah, so. And it's crazy. Yeah. We can be so different. And that can be really dangerous on the field, too. In some leagues, you know, account for, you know, weight weight limits and things like that, but, um, why not just let them get a little bit stronger and become great athletes first. And, and then they can start tackling. And, you know, I don't think it will actually think it would help save the game too, because you look at hockey, hockey has been doing great since they delayed the onset of checking and football could really increase its uh, number of participants if flag or another version became you know, the, the way that we played it when we're young, there's a, a new um, version called tackle bar where there's bars on the back uh, of the yeah. players and they can reach around um, like they're wrapping up for a tackle, except instead of tackling, they rip the bars off of the back. You know, we can have some kind of graded um, different ways to play the game that would just ease them into the tackle form too. And, you know, we can start teaching certain skills when they're young and on tackling dummies, you know, once they're, they're getting close to that age cutoff without tackling each other. I think there are ways to do it where the sport could thrive, but we can also protect that developing brain. Right. That's uh, very important because, I mean, you know, the sport, like you're saying, sports is, you learn so much from, just from playing either in yeah. sports or team sports. Learn, but I love team sports and, the, mm-hmm. but that, and uh, so, uh, but besides that, uh, and the points you hopefully help with the points you made today and, and your book are, are very similar. So, but uh, so before before we go, uh, please just in, in, hawk your book really your you, the brain is on youth sports. So, why should people? What you have to do, listen to the podcast here if you know what 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 they why it's important to read it. But uh, what are some of the important points you made you may you think you make in the book? Yeah. So it starts out uh, with an intro that does include all of the, the science behind the benefits of sports and also the culture of sports, which is a big thing we need to change. And then I talk about uh, the science in general. So talking about both you know concussions and subconcussive impacts, what is actually happening in brain development? So why should we care? I talk about CTE as well. And then I think a, a really important part is that you know, the myths that, and misconceptions yeah. that a lot of, uh, and bad arguments that a lot of people have, have said, and maybe heard. You touched uh, on a few, Gabby, are there any others that you think are, are apparent, like very common, common myths and bad arguments? Yeah. You know, I, I hear a lot of like, well, we shouldn't be talking about football because soccer is bad too, or yeah. you know, things like that. And, and, you know, that two things can be bad at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. but also, yeah. Also that, um, you know, you have to hit young to become a superstar because if you don't hit young, how are you going to learn and how are you going to end up playing in college? And, and that's also just not true. And I, I address a lot of those myths like that, hopefully with some ways that parents um, and coaches and others involved can counter these, ar- these arguments, you know, you have that in your back pocket now to counter that if, if it's something that you hear. And also then I give some, some tips for how we can improve that safety, both you know, with just youth sports in general and in your own community, what you can do as well uh, to help improve youth sports. Right. Well, thank you so much. And this is a, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great book and a great idea and a great theme. And uh, also, I have been didn't ask this earlier, but uh, you're assistant, community, assistant clinical professor at, at mm-hmm. Wisconsin. So what what do you teach? What would you be teaching? Not say tomorrow, because, but during the, this term, I say. Yeah. So I, I teach, uh, anatomy, uh, both lecture and lab. Uh, we coordinate lab because we have uh, quite a few students. Um, yeah, what are you doing in the lab these days? What was that? What are you doing in the lab these days? Oh, 
we're doing the brain actually uh, in this unit we're looking at the brain which is very exciting for me um it's one of my obviously not surprisingly my one of my favorite things to teach about <laughs> so yeah. um yeah so we're looking at the brain and um and it had neck in general but um yeah it's the cranial nerves and all this stuff yeah yep okay. cranial nerves um all of it yeah we look at cross sections radiology so that they can see see the anatomy like they will in the clinic too so it's great i'm not saying i'm with tomorrow this is a totally side here but during i'm doing my i i'm a standardized patient at the med school here and that's, oh, okay. so i i've been talking it's about neurology because i my brain trees my but you know obviously what they talk about they'll ask you about and stuff so and try to and they'll do the old cranial nerves like class to make the kind of vision say which nerves why is this he looks up here or looks down here or looks sideways. What does he, why is it, why is he looking at this? Where can, what's, what, but, oh, what nerve muscle are you looking at? So that, so it's, yeah. It's all That's very, really interesting. That's very yeah. cool. It's awesome that you do that. No, thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's, a lot of stuff. it's really great. It's a good, good program. It's a great program. It's, yeah. It's kind of it's fun to learn, learn about stuff. So I've learned it in my university a bit, but also, and now I've done this for a year. Now as I learn again, and I learn like all about the cranial nerves and stuff, and not yeah. all about them. But you know, just be two hours I'm with the students and the and the tutor, teacher, prop, whatever, doctor. So yeah. So anyway, but um, so so where can people find so that go go way back now. I'm done running there too much. But uh, the youth, the brain and youth sports. If you want to say the youth brain and sports, but the brain and youth sports by Dr. Julie Stan. And where can they find that? You can find that um, on Amazon or other uh, online retailers, Barnes and Noble too. Uh, and if you go to my website, juliestam.com, um, I have links there where you can purchase. Uh, also, you can follow me on, on socials and have links there too. Um, it's at Julie Stam PhD. And uh, that's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, great. Well, thanks so much. And I already, already, I do follow you, so I don't need to <laughs> listen to that part. But uh, yes, so uh, but I recommend everyone to go buy the book and learn about this and very interesting topic and important topic. So thank you so much, Doctor Stan. Dr. Thank Julie. you so much for having me. Yes, thanks. The music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound. www.bensound.com.